and they're fourth all time, considering Division One and Division Three. Coach, welcome to you. If you can uh, just talk about the success of the program in only five years and making it to the Frozen Four. Still having fun. <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, you know, I guess uh, reiterate what I've uh, said in the past is really just uh, uh, this is an accumulation of a lot of hard work from a lot of different players in the past. Uh, like I said, starting with Division Three, that won two national championships. Uh, those players, uh, as I mentioned earlier, have set uh, set a bar of excellence. Uh, you know, I see Brian Mason. I don't know if he's back here, but uh, he's a, a national champion coach uh, and. Uh, you know, a lot of players, a lot of hard work since we've gone to Division One to get to this point, and uh, it's just really exciting. And uh, you know, it's a little unbelievable. I just, I, for me, anyway, it's just the, the calmness of the players and just the way they go about their work and, and how much fun. I, you know, I don't know if it's because we're the underdog or what the reason is, but we're, we're really um, uh, just having fun along the way, and, and we don't feel any pressure, and we're excited to play the next game and the next game and so on. And it's been great, and uh, it's great to be a, a representative of the Atlantic Hockey Association, uh, its first uh, Final Four, and, and uh, I think uh, our league has prepared us extremely well for, for where we're, we're going and what we've accomplished so far, and uh, uh, the coaches in our league are outstanding, and uh, we've had some tough, tough games throughout the whole year, and, uh, and it certainly helped us get to this point, so uh, to the former players and to the Atlantic Hockey Association, uh, the, They've gotten us ready for this, and uh, it was just a, a great game, uh, a great weekend for RIT. Questions for the student athletes only at this time. Tyler uh, Ken Shop from Schenectady gives that. Just talk about that big stretch there in the second period, which turned the game around. Um, well, we got that goal quick there, and we had to come out and get the lead again. And uh, once we got that goal, we got our confidence back, and we kept things going. Uh, Derek. Ed Weaver, Troy Record. Uh, last night, a lot of you were asked if uh, Atlantic Hockey will ever uh, get respected to. Uh, what would you say tonight? Um, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, this is just my own opinion, but I, I think Atlantic Hockey will never get the, the respect that it deserves. Um, I don't know if it's because of newer conference or because some of the teams can't give scholarships. Uh, I mean, I don't know the exact reason. Um, but, I mean, I think we proved tonight that we can't be overlooked and we're, we're excited to be here and we're going to continue to have fun, uh, uh, win, lose, or draw. Dan, some questions? Uh, for me, like Jared said, um, Atlantic Hockey Association maybe hasn't been given it due credit, but with wins like this on the national stage, uh, they just obviously help our team, but the league as a whole. So whenever you have this spotlight, you know, we're representing our league and we know that and, and we take great pride in that. Uh, Tim Wilson from the Albany Times Union for the guys. Outside of your locker room, be honest, what kind of odds do you think people were giving you to be right here, right now? Um, I think everybody was uh, really the big underdog in this. Didn't have much faith in us, but uh, we were able to play hard and come together as a team and prove them all wrong. Well, one thing I can tell you is that the 30 guys in the dressing room definitely believed it and you know we expected to win and and we still expect to win and um, you know a lot of the outsiders maybe didn't give us much of a chance but um, we just take that in stride and accept it for what it is and still go out there and approach the game the same way. I believe Olshansky NCAA.com for, for Dan and Jared the, the year before you came to RIT um, was, was the Holy Cross represent of, uh, of Minnesota. And then the, the last three years, you know, you've seen Air Force have their battles in the tournament and get the win last year. Did watching those, those kinds of games and what Atlantic hockey champions have done in the past give you an idea of you know, what was possible for you guys when you got here this weekend? Uh, I, don't, I, mean, I don't think it really gave us any confidence. I think uh, our team was excited to be here. We know that we've played strong uh, every single game this year in conference and out of conference. Um, I think we had just some bad luck early. and. Uh, guys didn't have to figure out their roles early on, and I think we would have done, done a better job out of conference. Um, but, I mean, we're just worried about ourselves playing our game. Uh, we know what we have to do. We don't really worry about the other teams. We know if we play our game for uh, 60 minutes, it's going to be a battle for the other team. So we just want to uh, continue that. Uh, 
I was just, I, I think watching Air Force the last couple of years just made us more hungry. Um, we've had a good rivalry with them the last few years, and they seem to come out on top uh, when it mattered most. Um, so that made us hungrier. And like, like Coach said, you know, this Final Four appearance has been an accumulation of five years of hard work. Even the guys that were here before us uh, put, put in a tough year where they were on the road for 75% of the games in the first year of Division One. And I think that every year since then, we've gotten a little bit better. The guys have gotten a little bit hungrier, and, and hopefully we can continue that. Yeah, Brian. Sorry. Um, this is for uh, Jared Brian Sullivan, U.S. College Hockey Online. Uh, you, made, you said that you don't think Atlantic Hockey will ever get the credit it's due. Is that you don't think they will, or you don't really want them to? Do you like the underdog role? First off, I really like your shirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but to answer, answer your question, uh, I mean, and you, we don't think about the underdog role or David versus Goliath or gold jacket, green jacket. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we, we don't we don't care about that. We're just worried about ourselves. We um, we want to give Atlantic hockey the respect that it deserves, and uh, we want to also prove to the nation that we can play. And uh, we have we have a fun squad, uh, great coaching staff, great players, all 25 guys. I mean. Uh, we have guys out of our lineup that scored big goals last weekend in the Atlantic Hockey Championship Series. Uh, every single guy on our team can play, and uh, I mean we don't we don't think about the, any of that underdog stuff or you know favorite. We don't care. We just want to go out and play. Okay. For Jared, I mean, looking back, looking at last year, you know, several of the path with Bemidji State, four seed coming out of the Midwest, beats the top seed, the number two seed overall, beats the number three seed to get to the front of the four. Just talk about, can you compare yourself a little bit to what the Beavers did last year? Um, like you said, I think uh, they were the second to last overall seed, just like we were. Uh, I don't think a lot of people gave them the respect that they deserved, uh, but I think they shocked a lot of people. They, they had a great team last year. They have a great team this year also. Uh, a lot of quick forwards. They had a great gold center last year in Dalton, I believe. Um, I mean, they are similar to us, I guess you could say a little bit. They have some smaller quick forward, like the transition game. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I would assume that they have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, kind of like we do, and we want to go out there and, and prove to people that we can play. Dan, uh, Andy Santillo from the Troy Record. Can you talk to talk about the, uh, the the crowd support that you guys have gotten, uh, you know, since you've been here on Friday? The RIT fans are awesome. Uh, at, our, at our home games, you know, we have a pretty small barn, but we always sell it out and have the most Rockies fans in our league, and, and you can see it today when we brought several hundred um, for the few hours that, that it took the fans to come. And even elsewhere in, in places like Massachusetts, we get 30, 40, 50, 100 fans at times, and, and you know, it, it's pretty special. The alumni are really really interested in uh, RIT hockey, and, and hopefully this will drive that uh, further one. Kevin O'Club here from the Democrat Chronicle. Could you just maybe all of you discuss what goes through your mind in the last two minutes when it's pretty obvious you're going to win and your crowd's chanting RIT and just, what, what is the thought? Fist pumping like champs, just like <laughs> DJ, DJ Pauly D. Uh, we're all trying to decide how we're going to celebrate once we get on the ice, what we're going to do, but it's a great feeling in the last two minutes there. Um, everybody's excited and happy with the win. Yeah, you're trying to hold the emotions in and just kind of focus on the game for the last two minutes. We obviously don't want to give up any any goals against, so, but it's hard to hard to keep that excitement uh, in check. So, um, like they said, just kind of just hold it on and watching the clock every second. Don't wish to like look. Don't wish to like be. just what's up. Um, how difficult do you think it's going to be to get your momentum back up when you do get to the front door after the break? Well. Actually, this morning I thought that would be a little bit of a concern for us. We had a huge high. The guys were really excited last night, and um, I, we just wanted to make sure we could refocus, put last night behind us, and focus on uh, New Hampshire. And um, I guess we obviously did that. Jared, can you follow up on that? Um, I mean, we do have some momentum going our way right now, but at the same time, I think it's good to have a week <coughs> off. Uh, I mean, a couple weeks. Um, it'll give us time to heal uh, physically, and also it'll. Uh, I think it'd be nice to let our heads deflate a little bit. I think we need to get back at it and uh, start to focus a little bit more. I mean, uh, the first period, we were a little too excited. And then the uh, first intermission between the first and the second, uh, it was really quiet in our locker room. It was kind of weird. And uh, I didn't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing, but it was definitely quieter in our locker room because the guys were focused. Uh, and I think everyone really knew what we had to do to go out there and get it.